بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد about um, Safar. I'll come to that in a bit. Uh, the other question is about Ramadan. If we happen to miss Ramadan, fasting of Ramadan for a valid reason, and make up afterwards, would we get the same benefit? Like, like when we fast during Ramadan, dua is accepted and 70 times hasanat, etc. <clears throat> uh, inshallah, yeah, yeah, there's nothing in the hadith that says that uh, se that, that 70 times that the hasanat are multiplied by 70. That kind of thing happens if for, for someone who fasts um, for the missed days after the month of Ramadan. That is something that's not confirmed. But the the way the ayat is structured and the mufassirun, as I said, as I said earlier, as I said earlier, they have said that what it took middle indicates that the barakat of Ramadan that is missed as a result of a valid excuse is then Allah Ta'ala compensates for it when the, when, the, when the individual makes the effort, Allah Ta'ala grants him that the missed barakat. So people who are not able to fast during the month of Ramadan, they may not be able to fast, but they are able to do dua during the month of Ramadan. They're able to do, um, they're able to, again, uh, do charity, whatever they, 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 they can afford. So other amal they can do during the month of Ramadan, even when they're not able to fast. So that barakah, is alhamdulillah not missed during the month however what they had missed during the month of ramadan was that they were not able to fast that is compensated for when they make the effort after the month of ramadan i hope that answers the question secondly about safar. what about this day and age what is how is suffer understood i try to explain that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would mention that three days and three nights um in the when, when it comes to the ahkam of Masa al Khufain doing Masa over leather socks, there the Prophet explained what suffer, what sharia, uh, in the in the in terms of sharia, what what is a valid suffer, what is a valid journey, how is when is it that a person is viewed as to be to be a traveler. So that applies to if we try and apply it to, to the modern day, then within three days people can go to moon and, and come back, mashallah. Nobody would be a traveler ever. From here to Australia is probably about 12 hours, 18 hours flight. <clears throat> so the modern day ex yani, uh, criteria of suffer, as the scholars of, 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 of fiqh have explained, is that the same is, is the is the journey traveled, not the time spent. So the so the length, the distance traveled, that is what's what's was measured, not the time spent. So the, the distance traveled in those days, in three days, the people were the journey that they were they, they, they were able to to the distance that they, they were able to cover in three days was um, that's been interpreted as 48 miles, one one counties, and the other is 51 or 52 miles. So to be safe, you can go for the 51 miles and may, major, may many others. Uh, are of the opinion that that's 48 miles. This is the Hanafi view. Um, I think Mushafi Rahman is close, uh, but I can't confirm about the Maliki and Hanabila. So, uh, so someone who's traveling that distance, um, 48 miles, 51 mi or 51 miles, but the the distance you is you count from the boundary of your city to the boundary of the city that you're traveling. As soon as you cross the boundary, you enter into the municipality or, or the, the city zone, then that's it. Now you've entered that 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 place and it, it, it doesn't, you stop counting. So the distance between Glasgow to, to Edinburgh, if we count from say, so one point A from Glasgow to point B in Edinburgh, uh, say uh, if, if someone travels from the Western side of uh, Glasgow to the Eastern, area of uh, Edinburgh, then that would be around about 60 miles. But because we do not count uh, the, the from your house to, to, to the to the desired to, to, to the house, that's the destination or the, or, or the place that what, the, that's that's going to be a destination. We count the city boundaries. So the, the journey between the, the distance between the city boundaries of, of the two cities, Glasgow to Edinburgh, is less than around about 45 or less less miles. So as a result of that, people traveling from Glasgow to Edinburgh would not find, fall in that category. 
but people traveling from Glasgow to Aberdeen um, or even Dundee or down south towards Carlisle, um, they do fall in that category because it's more than 48 miles. So that would be viewed as a, a traveler. And such a person would be allowed to, if he wants to, allowed to delay his fast until after the month of Ramadan. But then it clearly says, lakum. If you fast, this is better for you. So you're going to Umrah during the month of Ramadan and you're able to fast, then please do so because you fast and you're traveling even from here to, to Jidda, but you're able to fast, then do so. But if you think that, uh, that, that, that fasting during the month may make it difficult for you because you have to stay quite alert uh, at the time of boarding and, and disembarking and going through the, through the checks and nominations, and if you tired and overwhelmed with fatigue you might lose that kind of concentration and you might lose your ID documents or other other kind of similar incidents or you may become a burden upon others so to avoid that if you didn't fast that's also permissible but where possible one should try and observe fast moving on to <clears throat> ayah number 100 and bismillah ayah 187 so this ayah talks about as I said as I mentioned earlier three stages of fasting the third restriction or third ease was introduced here. The restriction was lifted. So initially, the fasting, and this was the case with some, some of the previous nations as well. They had to fast, the previous Ahli Kitab, the Jewish and the, and the Christians, some of them, uh, some of their fasts started for, two, it, was, it was for 24 hours. So they would start at one time and at 24 hours later, that's when their fast ended. So in early days of Islam, this is how Muslims used to fast. And subhanAllah, their fasting, the point that I missed earlier, that their, their fasting particularly was, uh, especially the, with the prophets, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and Sayyidina Ilyas alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, and numbers for the, number of the prophets, their fasting resulted in a special bestowment from the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam received the, the Torah, and Sayyidina Ilyas alayhi salatu wasalam also had something as mentioned by some scholars. Um, so it was combined, it was the, with, with special divine grace. So people who fast for the whole month, they, they also receive special bestowments and special grace from the Almighty Allah Azza wa the spiritual ones, which are not hidden from anyone who, who mashallah, any Muslim, everybody experiences the month of Ramadan, they're very, very different, um, they have different experience. So the previous nations, the Ahlul Kitab, uh, their fasting was for 24 hours. In early days of Islam, for Muslims it was the same. So they'd break their fast at the time of iftar at Maghrib time. Thereafter, they would have their Maghrib, um, then they they would eat something, and when they went to bed, that's when the, the when the 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 hours of fasting would start. So if someone woke up five minutes later, fifteen minutes later. He would not he was not allowed to she was not allowed to go back to eating or drinking so they would have then have to fast all the way until the next day and it was particularly difficult for it was difficult as you can imagine it was not easy someone came home tired and their names mentioned in the in the books of hadith as well sahabi comes home tired and he is exhausted because he's been working all day at the field yani uh, uh, the, the fields um, he was a farmer as some say his name was and some say his name was Bara. Uh, awesome. So, a number of names old, he came home tired and exhausted. Um, when he arrived home, uh, the food was not ready. So, he sat down there. Um, had without had barely had some maybe something to drink. He was tired, he was hungry, he's starving. And he, he sat there the food up or something, just trying to put things together. As she was doing that, he radiallahu anhu, he just leaned against the the wall. And because he was tired and overwhelmed with, with, with tiredness, he dozed off and he fell asleep. And his wife comes home. And she finds him in that state, and she said, "Inna lillahi inna lillahi and She was very upset, and naturally, when he woke up, he was upset too because he had just slept, and by sleeping at that time after maghrib, his fast for the following day was to commence. So he did not eat anything. 
But you can only imagine what must have happened to him the following day. So they complained to the Prophet Rasulullah, this is what happened to him because he was hungry, he was starving, he was, and he was thirsty. And I only went to, to put things together for him. And he was so tired that he fell asleep. So this incident happened and some other incidents happened with, with a number of other Sahaba عنهم, that when people, when they go to sleep and they're in bed uh, with their spouses, the naturally temptation happens and people sometimes uh, that they are not able to, to control themselves. So a number of Sahaba complained to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we were in bed and then we couldn't uh, we, we, uh, restrain ourselves and we unfortunately did that we are not very, very, very proud of. So that is when, when these reports were mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal then introduced this ease. Now this, that restriction was lifted and the night time hours were were taken out of and removed from the hours of fasting. So now the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal introduces that ease in this ayah. It has been made halal for you to, to approach your women folk during the night uh, nighttime hours of the fasting. They are a libas for you and you are a libas for them. Libas is that you conceal the cover, the faults of one another. And you are an adornment. You are a so you are a that, that that's a you add beauty to one another. So libas lakum, they are your libas, libas for you, and your libas for them. And also the third meaning is that you, they, 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 the couple wrap themselves together in such manner, just like libas is wrapped around. So that is all mentioned here. And subhanAllah, the beautiful phrase not only mentions the this is the miraculous aspect of the Quran Karim. That a simple phenomena, a simple teaching here is that you are together, you, you, you lie together, you, you, you sleep together. That simple phenomena has been mentioned in a manner which, which talks about matching, talks so much about, there's so much about matrimonial life, life here that is not hidden from anyone who, who, who has such an experience that Allah Ta'ala wants one of you to, rather than exposing the other, keep, keep a cover on one another. And Allah Azza add value to, to each other's lives. So you you supplement uh, the, the the faults and the shortcomings of one another. One another. Allah is aware that the uh, when the when the hukum was strict, you used to deceive yourselves. Now this deceiving yourself means that you would cross the limits, and and, and you would you would be uh, you would fall into to things that were that Allah Taala has made. Uh, forbidden for you, Allah Azza wa had asked you to stay away from, but you could not restrain yourself and you would sometimes cross the line between the husbands and wives. And the relationship was not permissible during the night, nighttime hours in early days. But as Allah Ta'ala says, um, Allah is fully aware what you used to indulge in, what used to happen to you. But then Allah Ta'ala, rather than punishing you, He is again, as mentioned earlier, Yurid Allah Bikul Yusr. Allah Ta'ala has turned to you. And he has forgiven you. So now, Bashiruhunna has have relations with, with your with your women folk. And by having this relation again, as I said, miraculous aspect of the Quran Kareem, one small phrase carries an ocean of meanings, a wealth of meanings. And search for and look for that which Allah Ta'ala has written for you. That beauty, that that fuzzle, that grace that Allah has written for you, look for it and search for it. The barakat and the, and the intention and the desired goal of 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 marriage and of of relationship between uh, husbands and wives is the is to, is, is is to have progeny and to have children. So Allah Taala is that that's mentioned here as well in the course of things that Allah Taala has made it the the idea of coming together is to to increase the progeny and and to have children and that is something that, that which should be your goal not just mere fulfillment of your lust and your your, your desires but there should be the intention should be a loftier and it should, it, it should be noble that is the one meaning of ibtigha uh, which is mentioned here the other ibtigha which means which which literally means to search is that as you do as you sleep together Take that path which Allah Ta'ala has made permissible for you. 
search that which is permissible for you so when you when you enjoy the the with one another then do it in a manner which is productive that which is not productive from back passage etc that avoid that because that is not halal and the third meaning here is is that look for it is permissible for you to satisfy yourselves during the night hours however to show interest in that uh, in that heavenly reward and that ajr and thawam which allah has preserved for you that is more uh, that, that, that that is more desired and what is that allah ta'ala has kept hidden uh, ajr and thawam that is to worship allah ta'ala during the nighttime hours so it is permissible to sleep with your women folk but it is better that you that you search that heavenly reward and that ajr and thawam which allah has placed in ibadat so it's not that for 30 days of ramadan at night time this is what you do is that you you, you go to sleep in fact that is that is only that that has been made permissible while it is better for you to engage in ibadat during the night times so don't just do uh, any sleeping but spend some time at night in the month of ramadan doing ibadat and engage in in dua and in munajat and tilawat etc so now this clearly talks about the time when the fasting hour starts so the hour the, the fasting hour commences when this phenomena occurs the, the phenomena is that you you continue to eat and drink until the white thread of fajr becomes distinct and clear from the black thread of night so on the, at the horizon when the clear white white and and and, and that light emerges the, the the light of the the, the day, daylight emerges on the horizon that is when the when the fasting the, the time of fasting that's when when it starts so you start fasting at that time and then complete it take it all the way until the night time <clears throat> the night time phenomena occurs when just like the daytime phenomena occurs at the appearance of the black the, the white thread the nighttime phenomena occurs when the sun sets. As the Prophet ﷺ himself, he used to break fast straight after Maghrib. And in fact, in the, the number of ahadith where he ﷺ said that you will continue to remain in khair and virtue for as long as you do not delay the breaking of your fast after sunset. So as soon as the sun sets, that's when the night begins. And that is what's mentioned here at Muslim al-Layl. The Prophet ﷺ understood this verse as such. And that's how the Muslims have, 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 been, have been practicing since. There are others who, 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 interpret, who interpret the ayat and they say that a layl commence, the phenomena happens when the stars begin to appear, appear in the sky. Others say when the redness, shafaq ahmad, when it disappears. So they take their fast until that time. But that is clearly in violation of how the Prophet ﷺ explained the verse. The Prophet ﷺ explained the verse that he would break his fast at the time of Maghrib. So as soon as Maghrib happens, as soon as the call of Maghrib, the call for Maghrib Adhan is made, as soon as the sun sets, that's when the Prophet ﷺ used to end his fast. And that is when the Muslims have been, have been breaking their fast in the mainstream and majority. So there's something else that's mentioned, that's included here, a concept of i'tikaf during the month of Ramadan. So this is something a noble sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He he did he did i'tikaf almost every year since he came to Medina. So if Allah Taala gives you tawfiq, then make an effort to do i'tikaf. If not every year, then at least from time to time, not just once in your life. I'tikaf is not like Hajj. I'tikaf is something that is more like a regular sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It should be done every year. So if you are doing i'tikaf. Then in the during the time of Fatikaf, La Tubashiruhun, do not have relations relations with them at all. So touching even touching uh, one's wife with lust, with that desire and shahwat, that breaks the Atikaf. So in in, in in Atikaf, it is permissible for someone to talk to his wife, it's permissible for wife to talk to, to, to her husband, but there should not be any shahwat involved. They can even touch one another as long as this is not with, 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 that, with that list. If they touch one another with list, then whoever is doing i'tikaf, his i'tikaf will become, uh, that, that will become invalid and he or she will have to do a qadha later. 
Tilka Hududullahi Fala Takrabuha. These are the limits set by Allah Azza wa Jal. So do not go, go, go near to them. Kadalik Yubayinullahu Ayati Din Nas. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal explains his verses to you. La'allahum yattaqoon. So they may acquire piety and so they may, so they may acquire taqwa. So this was the, about, about fasting. Now then we move on to another hukum. We've talked, we've discussed about three ahkam here. We've learned the ayatul bir, uh, what the concept of bir, what is virtue. We've learned about qisas two. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've learned about wasiya three and we've talked about psalm four. Now this is the fifth one. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ And do not consume your wealth amongst you. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا Do not consume and do not eat أَمْوَالَكُمْ Your properties, your wealth, بَيْنَكُمْ amongst you, بِالْبَاطِلِ In a wrong in a wrong way, in an unjust manner. وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا And do not present it. تُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ Do not present it to إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ To the authorities in order to, in order to take away the fariqa min amwal nas a portion of people's properties in an unjust manner one to ta'lamu knowingly while you know while you're fully aware of it if you recall last week we talked about uh, <coughs> we talked about innama harrama alaykum al-mayta the animals that allah ta'ala has declared forbidden and when we talked about animals that that allah ta'ala has declared forbidden it was then mentioned it was uh, is followed with with another ayat which talked about in the people that conceal the divine revelations and they per they, they, they sell them for a little price and th their behavior was condemned and it was said that all they're filling their bellies with is fire and they'll soon be casted into 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 jahannam so haram of in terms of food stuff it was mentioned but haram in terms of Haram eth, method of earning was also condemned. <clears throat> Here, Allah Taala talked about in previous verses, Psalm was talked about where halal is abandoned for certain hours of day. <clears throat> now, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla says, the restriction, uh, prohibition of, uh, of of eating and drinking, for in in all with the niyat of Psalm, that is for temporary hours, that is restricted hours. That's a yam madudat for a number of days. However, prohibition of consuming haram is permanent. Haram is never permissible. So haram is not only like some of the things that I mentioned earlier, alcohol or or or, or flesh and flesh of khinzir or uh, as we discussed last week and or al mayta That's not what the, the concept the, the, that's not where the concept of haram is restricted to. The concept of haram goes further. If Allah, if your your halal income becomes haram for you during the hours which Allah Ta'ala has prescribed for fasting, but the property of one another, which is halal to the to their legitimate owners, is haram for the others if they approach it in an unjust manner. So your wealth is halal for you, your brother's wealth is halal for him, your sister's wealth is haram uh, halal for her. But if you try and each take each of this property in with with consent is fine, but in an unjust manner, that is haram. That's what we mentioned here. Do not consume the property of one another in an unjust manner. And do not take it to the al hukam to the authorities, in order to consume, to take a portion of other people's wealth in an unjust manner when, when you know it, when you're aware of it. Sometimes people they make for they, they they forge documents. Sometimes they make false documents, and they are able to convince the authorities that the property of someone else belongs to them. So if the, if you if you did this and you forge documents, so you forge testimonies, and you somehow manage to convince the authorities, and the authorities they gave you possession of um, the and the, the control over. The property of other people then since you know that it's not yours and you in an unjust manner because you could do it and you could, you could get away with it you you manage to acquire their property then it does not become halal for you so all forms of deception like people know the passwords of one another people figure out the secret words and they, they get hold of their secret doc their private documents and they have access to other people's property and wealth 
if they if they if, if they even if they if even if they could get their hands on it and they they they, they take away with it let further even if it then is supported and uh, allowed and permissions granted by the authorities even then it does not become halal so you may consume uh, a portion of other people's wealth in, in a lunges manner when you know it, when you're aware of it. There is a discussion here, which if Allah gives me tawfiq today, I'm for some strange, I don't know why, but I'm feeling a bit tired. And I'm, subhanAllah, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to do as best as I can, but I think I'm struggling with, 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 with expressing myself properly. But there is a discussion here, which if, if, if Allah gives me tawfiq next week, I think we'll start from it. But And that discussion here is that if someone takes to, to a, goes to a Qadi and there he convinces the Qadi that a woman that he is not married to and he convinces the Qadi that this woman is my wife and the woman is in denial but he presents such papers, such documents, such witnesses that the Qadi becomes convinced. And then he says, OK, fine, I am convinced that she is your wife. So I allow you, I, I instruct her, I command her to go with you um, and to be your wife. Then what? Is that halal or haram? According to many scholars, this is haram. But according to Hanafi ulama, this, this would, the Qadi's instruction, the Qadi's verdict, the Qadi's ruling would be like an Ilan of Nikah. So from that point onwards, she will become his wife. So that is that that that, that appears to be here in violation to, to this ayah, but that is a totally different piece of cake. That's that's a totally different subject. And that is a necessity. Um, and th that doesn't fit here. That's something, inshallah, we'll discuss in detail later, but just briefly here. Um, Briefly, there, if the, the the reason why the the fuqaha have accepted or Hanafi fuqaha at least they've accepted that marriage to be they've accepted that uh, verdict by the judge to be uh, to be to constitute to and to be equal to declaration of marriage is because of a need, and that need is that if you continue to to declare it to be null and void and you do, you refuse to give authenticity to it, uh, yani you give you refuse to recognize the judge's verdicts, then that would create facade and chaos in the community. Furthermore, the, the, the nasab of the future children, that will be compromised too. So the, the woman has other courses. She can then go to khula. She can ask for support. And if she's, she's not able to find anything, any help, then she is kind of abused. She, she is in, 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 in a situation for which she'll be compensated for in the hereafter. But in this worldly terms, if if that marry, if that's not allowed to be uh, recognized to be as, as a valid instruction, then that would create facade in the, in, in, the, in the community. And she will also, and her children particularly, will suffer in the future. So protect that because of that wider implications of it, they've given permission. But to for anyone to take that as a, as a normal uh, meth, uh, yani procedure for nikah, then that that is not permissible, and that is something haram. And this this approach is sinful, for which they'll be penalized in the hereafter. So there is something here which, which is which needs to be understood that some some ahkam, as we talked about shahid as well earlier on, there is shahid fi dunya, but not in the hereafter. So this would be permissible in this worldly sense. Uh, we would take it as valid as binding. And any hukam that 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 results as um, uh, that, that 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 establishes as a result of it, we will 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 continue that. We'll continue with that. However, just like that individual who's not shaheed in the hereafter, this person will have to 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 pay a hefty price in the hereafter. Yes, aduna kanil ahilla. Now this is hukam number six after asom. So you you will get this list of ahkam one after the other. This next one is about al ahilla. I think before I start with this, I think we're going to, to stop here for today. I'm going to ask to be excused. Uh, just there were a few ver words today. I don't th I don't think we'll be able to get to that ayat later on. But the words for today, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ <clears throat> We'll just look at these words and inshallah we'll continue next week from the, the, the ayats that are to follow.
But let us look at those words, and then inshallah, I'm going to unfortunately stop here today. <clears throat> The words we were going to look at today are these Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Every, I think, what majority of you would be familiar with this dua. Uh, this is a dua which the Prophet has recommended. It's a, he وسلم, used to especially pray it between, uh, when doing tawaf of Baytullah al Haram, he would especially make it after between Ruqn al-Yamani and between al-Hajr al-Aswad. But this is a dua which Prophet also prayed at other occasions as well. Very, in fact, some some have even said that he would repeat this dua three times every time when he lifted his hands in prayer. This is a dua which sums up the comfort of, uh, of the hereafter as well as of dunya. The first part of it is Rabbana. Rabbana is made up of two words, Rabba and Na. Na is a pronoun which refers to first person plural. <clears throat> us I is singular and we is plural so first person plural we Rabbana us so we as something that ours so Rabbana our Lord Rabbana our Lord Atina is made of Ati made up of Ati and Na Ati means grant and give give us grant us our lord grant us so as i said na is a pronoun for plural first person our lord grant us fi means in fi means in the word fi you would find many times in the quran just like ala means up upon on top of fi means inside in a dunya refers to dunya everybody knows what dunya is this worldly life so our Lord grant us in dunya hasana. Hasana means something that is good, something that is virtue, something that is beneficial. So that those are all hasana. There's something that is beneficial, something that is good, something that is virtue. Grant us in this dunya dunya life. Some have even said hasana means um, uh, some some ulama. I'm, I'm not I'm not talking about mufassirs, the, the, the commentators of the Quran. I'm talking about some some ulama. We 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 heard some of our asatis, our teachers, explain the word hasana as a, a good companion in life. So they would recommend that, that 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 boys and girls that are not married, they should make this dua with the niyyat that oh Allah grant us a a good companion in life. But hasana generally is a beauty is is the is the comfort of of all of all types. So our Lord grant us comfort in this dunya wal akhira wa fil akhirati hasana. Wa means and again fi we you know that fi means a venture or in al akhira is afterlife. Wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun was the first time that you probably must have heard the word al akhira in the Quran Kareem. So al akhira afterlife the time that begins as soon as we, we leave from this dunya. Barzakh is part of an akhirah. There are three realms. First realm is the worldly realm where we are. The dunya, in fact, you can say this alas, ahd alas, the the alim al arwah, our souls before they came into this dunya, they were Allah Taala had kept them somewhere when the souls were created. So that was the first phase of existence. The second phase of existence is this dunya, and the third phase of existence is as soon as people leave from this dunya. Even that is departed, uh, divided into two two parts. One is Alamul Barzakh, and the other, they say, uh, Alamul uh, Hashr, uh, or and, and beyond. And Alamul Barzakh is that time from death until the day of judgment. Allah knows the length of it. So Al Akhirah, Barzakh is part of Al Akhirah. Wal Akhirati, and in the in the afterlife, Qina Adab al Nar. Qina again is made up of Qi and Na. Qi means save us. Waqina. So the word qi means save. This word, this is you also find the same in the dua of Hamalatul Arsh. The angels who, who carry the arsh and the throne of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and only Allah knows how, how it is. But they, they, one of their duas, Alladini Yahmirun al Arsha wa Manhawla, 
يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويستغفرون so the angels that are there they enjoy the proximity with, the, with Allah Azza wa Jal there they say Qina one of the dua is Qihim Adab Waqihim Waqihim Sayyat so Qi the, the letter Qi uh, with, 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 with Kasra means save and protect and save Qina and save us Adab and Nar the punishment of the fire and Nar means fire Adab means punishment so Qina save us from the punishment of fire these are the words for today. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Our Lord grant us in this dunya hasana comfort and in the akhirah hasana. The comfort of the hereafter is that there is easy reckoning, the easy hisab. There's no punishment and the easy, easy a person uh, is saved, uh, yani, with ease someone's led to, to, to al jannah. Waqina adab al nar and save us from the punishment of the fire, save us from the adab of jahannam. So these were the words for today. Even though this ayah will be coming, inshallah, next week, we weren't able to, to, to get to, to there, inshallah. But hopefully next week, there's, there's a lot of it about hajj. And hajj will, will uh, uh, yani, that's the, 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 and may, we may not have to delve as deep in when we talk about hajj and jihad. But inshallah, we'll try and cover this next week. But today, uh, in, I'm, I'm going to, inshallah, finish now early, about five minutes early. Inshallah, hope to see you next week. Yeah, if there are any questions, please do highlight. And shall I try and address that? Is there any questions, please? Okay, there's nothing. Jazakumullahu khairan. Inshallah, see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran. Thank you so much.